Good morning, afternoon, evening, and good night. I'm Tomo. And I'm the actual next Primark. And uh, welcome back to Two Nerds Talk. Uh, tonight we're doing something a little bit new, a little bit different. I uh, guess you could call it Two Nerds React. Yeah. Uh, wait, no, we don't want to say React because the Fine Brothers might sue. <sighs> Damn. Is that is that low hanging fruit making fun of the Fine Bros like ten years after that drama? Probably. Oh. Ah oh, well. Uh, so tonight. As, as I stopped watching them. Yeah. So tonight there is um, Adepticon coming from uh, Warhammer GW. Uh, workshop. Big event. They're showing off a bunch of new models, and uh, so we're gonna react. I'm gonna start off by showing off. Uh, the teasers that we've been getting coming up to this. Man, look at that out Oh man, I'm excited for new orcs. These Tau are gonna kick ass. Uh, and then we've got this one, which is basically the same video, it's just with a much less interesting main character. I cannot make out what's in his lenses there, though. I think that's a termagant. Uh, yeah. Somebody pointed out that it most looks like a termagant. I could see so it. So maybe, maybe we'll get new termagant homer gods. So going into today, uh, basically until like an hour ago when I woke up, um, I thought we were going to be seeing a uh, 10th edition launch. Uh, and then we got yet another new video that posted four hours ago. And we all know what this means, right? Yes, we're finally getting the felonids. No, we're getting a plastic Thunderhawk. We are getting Codex Celestial Lions. Those orc snipers won't know what hit them. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so it seems like we're going to be finally getting uh, the lion. Uh, finally, a second loyalist prime. Well, I say loyalist, but uh, a second primarch that's not a demon primarch. A non chaos primarch. He, he, the, only, the question was if he was a traitor, not if he was chaos. Yeah, fair enough. And if people are mad about uh, Dark Angels jokes, eh, suck it up. I have a fallen army. We'll, well offend all one. two of you Dark Angel fans out there. I mean, the Dark Angels are like the second most popular Loyalist Space Marine Legion, but... They actually aren't. It's Space Wolves and Blood Angels that are in the top spots. Yeah. And like Ultramarines. Spice Wolves! Yeah. Some people... Just don't have taste. Indeed. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, the reveals today. Uh, and if you can see, uh, going to the Warhammer community page, we've got... Uh, they, they did some silhouette reveals on what we're going to be seeing. Uh, I'm personally seeing... Uh, we got a goblin here. Uh, I think that might. I I actually think that might be uh, chaos. Like. Uh, uh that is lizard. a that is a goblin nose right there. What? No. Oh, that far left. No, that's a lizard man. Are you sure that's a lizard man? Look at the tail. Oh, that is a tail. Yeah, that's totally the. I'm betting that's the Croxigors. Or uh, whatever they're called. They're like the bigger. They're like their big tough, seraphon guys. Next to that, I'm guessing this is going to be a new Warcry uh, Warband. I Underworlds. think that might... that might That's either Stormcast, because the Lightning Bolts, or some kind of Elf, because the shield is kind of Lumineth looking. Yeah. Although, I don't know if that's a shield. That might be a uh, robe. Maybe. I'm thinking more like the thing on, like... the, the This thing on the side here, right? Because if you look at the silhouette, it kind of looks like it squares off at the top. I don't Could know. That one's a hard. Yeah. To, that uh, was a hard one to call. The lightning bolts do tell me uh, uh, stormcast, but um, well, the lumineth have like an element thing going on, so I could totally see one of them being like lightning. 
Yeah, fair enough. Uh, and then from the far right, uh, we got a new Dreadnought. A, a tactical Dreadnought. Yeah, so I'm assuming what this is going to be the Horus Heresy reveal. Unless this is the... Oh, you know what? No, that's a that's a Terminator. That's a Terminator. I, I thought you were joking. Yeah, that's obviously a Terminator. I'm dumb. Yeah, I'm. my you, first thought was Dreadnought, but no, that's a Terminator silhouette. So that's probably going to be a new kit of uh, Terminators. So an actual Firstborn kit uh, coming out after how many Primaris and just firstborn characters it's gonna be primaris they're, they're gonna say that primaris can now wear wear dreadnought armor i mean given we're getting the lion i could see him rejecting uh primaris stuff because it's gilliman's project gw never will yeah fair enough and then uh right here uh, this is going to be another sigmar focused thing given all the sun that's, iconography that's chaos that is, is that totally chaos, chaos. Look at the star. Look at the staff. See, that, that is... looks like uh, yeah. that looks like the sun, though, not so much the uh, star. Yeah, but look at the top of the staff. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess like, you can see, kind of see the skull. That's... You can kind of see the skull there too. Yeah, that is that's the no star. chaos. That might be Warcry. This might I be Warcry. Um, haven't all the chaos books for AOS come out? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure they have. I I'm think sure. he nice so Slime S just came out, so. This is Warcry or Underworlds. So I'm calling it now. We could also be seeing Chaos Dwarfs because they've been uh, hinting Chaos Dwarfs are coming back. They mean Chaos Dwarden? Shut the hell up. <laughs> and then, of course, in the I... middle, this is very obviously going to be uh, Ferris Menace. Yeah, that's a great Protorabo. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, picking up my uh, Horus model for 40k gonna be a great fulgrim okay we're just gonna go through all the primarchs that aren't uh the lions so this is what we're looking at right now we don't really you know, know what i figured it out it's a thunder warrior that would be um i mean they brought back literally fucking everything else from rogue trader and you know what's the funniest part is the thunder warrior equivalent of a chapter master was called a primarch of course it was Bring back all the Primarchs! Thunder Warriors everywhere! The only one we're not going to bring back is Fulgrim, the one everyone wants. Plastic Noise I mean, Marines, when? I don't... Hmm. What Primarch do you think is least likely to come back in any way, shape, or form? Horus. Yeah. I'd say either Horus or um, Conrad Kurz. I could see, like like a Sanguinor type thing with Conrad Kurz. But bringing back Horus would just cheapen uh, their poster child, Abaddon. Ah, uh, now I wish Horus came back. So, even Ferris and Sanguinius have had things set up for them to come back. Exactly. Like, Ferris has had his things set up. Um, Rogel Dorn is all but confirmed to still be alive. Um, we're probably not going to see Omegon, but we might see Alpharius. Well, yeah, I mean, I see him right over there. He, he's all five of these silhouettes. But I'm Alpharius, Shade. But I'm Alpharius. Uh, but yeah, so we're, we're excited. Uh, I saw the announcement for, um... The stream, I'm just like, hey, why don't we do a Two Nerds Talk? Uh, speaking of, though, um... Last week's episode um, is still being edited. It is a two-hour long video, and going through that is just soul draining. We overdid it. We overdid it. We overdid it. All right. So the Twitch, the the Warhammer Twitch page is live, but they haven't started yet, so we can continue uh, chatting. <laughs> What do you what what release do you think you're going to be most excited for? Um, as cheesy as it is, probably the uh, Tyranids uh, line update. Yeah, I'll be honest. Um, this is my my excitement for this is going to entirely depend on if we're getting any Tyranids at all. 
Otherwise, I think I'm probably going to care more about the under, like any potential underworld slash Sigmar stuff. My hypo meter is kind of already spent today. Yeah, you uh, you went and watched some uh, some kaiju stuff. How'd that go? Tokyo SOS in theaters, as well as uh, they before the movie, they also played the short uh, Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex, which was awesome. And it was really cool because earlier in the week, I got to see the original Mothra in theaters. And Tokyo SOS is essentially a sequel to Mothra in many ways. But it was also really cool just seeing like how much better the evolution of the special effects were. Because I'm not blind, like I like traditional special effects, but I can still see the wires sometimes when I'm watching those 60s movies. But then you watch Tokyo SOS and everything is seamless. Because, you know, they have just the right amount of CGI integration to perfect things. It was breathtaking. Honestly, this is going to sound weird. The moment I got, like, most of my breath taken away, like, most amazed while watching Tokyo SOS, was there's a moment where, like, Godzilla roars and Mothra roars back. And it just got, like, they had the perfect loudness. So you got that movie theater reverberation. And I was like, ah. Oh. It reminds me of I when I went to go stuff. see um, the new Star Wars trilogy. Mm. And, uh, you know, we're not... I don't see us ever talking about Star Wars. But... We, uh, have, div- we have differing opinions on stuff. I mean, we, we mostly agree, but the stuff we disagree on is, is enough that we get heated. Yeah. Uh, like... How much the Ugnats deserve death? No, kill them all. Um, but uh, that moment when I saw the uh, like when the first opening uh, blare of the opening uh, title card bl- place, every single time I see that, like when I went first went to see that in theaters, I almost teared up. From just how excited I was uh, watching episode seven. Zero minutes remain. It is eleven o'clock. So we're gonna switch over to the war, uh, the preview. Uh, what I'm thinking we're going to do is we'll watch like the 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 release videos. And then I'm gonna mute the stream while we watch the uh, while the the commentators commentate. Yeah, because you know the commentators are always the worst part of these. They have like no charisma, and I mean, you know, pot calling the kettle black with us, but I bet they know nothing of Godzilla. Yeah, I mean, you turn you turn tuned into a. Uh, a game's like a, a Warhammer stream to listen to us talk about Godzilla and Star Wars, right? They're British, so they probably only watch Gorgo. And it's sequel, Waiting for Gorgo. <laughs> <laughs> As a reminder, um, Talking Tokusatsu Part 2 will be coming when it's done. When it's done. Oh, uh, what are you least excited for? Um, anything relating to the horror scene. I absolutely 100% agree. Um, if if that one silhouette is Lumineth, that... So, Lumineth already had their book come out. I don't know. If that is, like, a Lumineth-related thing... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be an Underworlds thing. Maybe. That's true. Um, Have the Lumineth had a recent uh, Underworld Warband? No, they've only had one, and that was like, I think that was in the Beast Grave Dire Chasm era. So yeah, so it, I'm it, gonna guess it's a, it's a Lumineth uh, uh, Warband. You event. know what? No, I'm kidding myself. The Lion, I, whatever. You don't care about the Lion? I'm excited for the Lion. I don't like Primarchs. I don't like the Dark Angels. 
Hello and so, welcome to the Warhammer preview, it's a whole coming nothing live for me. to you from right. Adeptcon 2023. Yep. I am Eddie and I'm joined today by Mike and we have got so much cool Warhammer to show you. I am so excited to share it again and it has been such an energizing... Oh hey, it's not the two guys with zero personality for once. ...founding events of the independent scene. It's one of the largest yeah. Warhammer events in the world. It is run by a passionate it group of volunteers and folks who just love... Everything I think that's the guy in the right. See I mean, it is Eddie something. Of them in the room here and share everything we're about to I follow him on Twitter. Ah, oh, gotcha. I I'm buzzing at the chance it to was, get to do it again. It was really really fun. So we, we've just had I don't a, like that the background is the more Terminator than Tyrannid. 1000 more Hammer fans. 1100. 1100 1, and some other people. No, it's about half and half. Really really cool. It's just more noticeable because the the Terminator has a wider nose. We're watching along on the stream. No, the like they don't minutes, split down the middle. Like you, you get the entirety of the Terminator's head crest. Given the fact thing. that it's like 3 a.m. in some of our yep. core demographic here of this for this show. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, do let us know where you're tuning in from, guys. Uh, this is it's about I think three or four in the morning over in the UK. Um, it's still pretty late over here in the US as well. So. It's pretty late in the US. We're here at Central Time. It's already past 10. Uh, Eddie here was probably still getting over the jet lag. You were in the UK uh, just yes. yesterday. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we had an interesting flight over. It was not without incident, but it's all, all good. We're you here now. You visited many cities on absolutely. your way to Chicago. Uh, yeah, well, so I can see, already see in the chat we've got loads get of people. Get on with it. These poor by people so fast. talking from UK, Chicago. But, but yes, get, get on with it. Europe, Europe, China. Get on with it. Places. So the Shire I see in there as well. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We've got a really, really cool show. We've got loads of really fun stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to share it. Um, uh, if you guys... If you guys have got any theories or any things you're particularly looking forward to seeing, I hope they reveal the that Some of them the lion's be. model is um, him getting indeed, eaten by a mole. Get out of us in the chat because there's all sorts of things we can talk about over the next bit here. Yeah, we, we might be able to answer some. The Twitch stream, the stream is just so getting bad. loaded with uh, fucking wild guesses. Uh, Morbius, Morbius. Uh, uh, but fine. we'll we'll do our best if any kind of repeat questions pop up. <laughs> Morbius. Um, so yeah. So, Mike, before we we, we dive lion in, and Morbius. Um, I don't know why. Adepticon, obviously, a huge part. Well, of out of all the Primarchs, he's one of them. Part of the scene, for, for, for Warhammer, you are. He's gonna of when uh, when he uh, interrupted the stream and said it's Morbin time. Well, so I shed it here. Who, who come to Adepticon and have been here many times. I came here many times before I joined Games Workshop, but it really inspired me. I really like the part where like he was about to take on Horus and he said, "Stand back, Sanguinius. I'm about to morb." Elanius bias? Nah, nah, it was Morbius. Without the community, Warhammer is nothing, and without Warhammer, we wouldn't be lucky enough to have this community. And Morbius is the reason. Morbius is the reason some Blood Angels don't have to worry about the Red Thirst. I think it was really cool when they revealed that he was something surpassed a perpetual. He was an eternal perpetual. It's sort of the Godfather of. No, he was the Eternal Morb. Adepticon existed before them all. And so it's been well, that's great super over the years, and I think this is the 20th year that they've been doing it, yeah, the 18th yeah. Adepticon. Show us um, the kitten! And, and my ears are ringing from Get the on with it! The that was here in the room, and it was palpable from the moment that folks... Oh my god, in. could you imagine uh, really if uh, uh, GW announced, as part of Warhammer Plus, the they the teamed up with Alpha Busa? I think everyone would forgive them at that point. Everyone. Make it one year. Come say hi to us. Eddie and I will be on. Although I think sure. I'm You're pretty sure uh, all all about the latest Alpha Abuse has mentioned he's very happy doing I think uh, we should probably show them some stuff. other the worlds right now. They want, it's, it's stupid to I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I think he may have partially used the GW policy thing as an excuse. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. The of the galaxy, the Dark Angels, the Arcs of Omen series has led to the break. Abaddon has sent out the Arcs of Omen. Bastion Abaddon. Is now at large and yeah, GW put out an official pronunciation video where they said Abaddon. I know! In the entire galaxy who could stand against Angron? He has mutton chops. Holy shit! Johnson is the Primarch of the Dark it Angels looks fantastic. The Dark Angels Legion, and now he is the returned Primarch of the Dark Angels chapter. Not over-designed. That's a big deal. Return Look at that the shield. Sideburns. That was an era The sideburns. The inhabitants of the 41st millennium and for fans of the 41st millennium. It doesn't happen very often, and this is the second opportunity in my lifetime. Is that to, not to the lion sword? Mark return. He's been deep in the rock no. for thousands of years. I don't think lost so. to chaos. But this is where the lion... Oh my god, that's not the lion sword. What the fuck? Cypher has, Cypher has the lion sword. Yeah, but... In the dark. I guess. Even Belial didn't want to let go of the or give the uh, take the lion sword from him. World full of monsters and then taken in by knights 
after he'd spent years hunting down creatures of chaos. And that's he pretty much what old. he's come back to doing. He's found he looks night and day better than Dillon's model. By darkness, warp storms, he does. Chaotic Holy beasts, shit. Set back to work. He is going to reunite, you'd imagine. Do you think he has a helmet option? And woe betide anybody who finds himself. Probably. I mean, Gilliman had a helmet so, option. But you never see it. Yeah, but his, his helmet's. Uh, not Dante. Azrael's. Uh, Azrael has it. I've never pictured the lion with that kind of a beard, but yeah, my god, does he make it work. So, so uh, yeah, that is a very nice looking lion model. It, I, I will concede it is better than Gilliman. That might be my new fa uh, number two Primark model. Magnus, number one? Yes. Because Mortarian's awful. Mortarian's awful. Uh, Andron is what you'd expect. He's it, good, but he's what you'd expect. Yeah. And Gilliman is also what you'd expect, but he's also kind of over-elegant. His face is a little derpy, and I don't like I don't like his armor, that, like all the filigree on his armor. But that digress. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's over-elegant. And yeah, that is not the Lion Sword. But this is pretty good. <laughs> if you ever want to feel worthless, he has a pistol. <laughs> Do you recognize that Crozius, the, uh, the Watcher in the Dark, is carrying? I don't think that's anything in particular. Are those? Oh, for a second they're like the. Oh. 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 What's up? Those like angel wing backpack thing. I mean, mm. he is a dark angel. Yeah. I don't know. The kind of feathers just kind of loosely hang. I, I don't know. That one's not working for me. May depend on how it's painted, though. I'm kind of digging how the um, <clears throat> the backpacks uh, shield things resemble yeah. the uh, Sisters of Battle. It does. I was thinking the same thing. Because at first I thought it looked like a pipe, like a pipe organ. Like I thought the feathers were like organ pipes hanging down. Has Lionel Johnson ever been shown with a shield? Because I feel like that's um, new, and I, I'm for that. I mean, his Horus Heresy novel or model just has him two handing a sword. The lion sword. Well, it's the lion sword or a chain sword. He has options. Why the fuck would you? Okay. The chain sword actually looks pretty cool. Chain swords generally look pretty cool. See, I never like when they do power swords where it's just blue around, like, the ends of the power conduits. I like it when the whole blade is blue. Don't they or, usually do yeah. that more with, like, force weapons? No, I think they used to do power weapons where the whole blade was blue, and then they've kind of stayed away from that. I like that his scabbard has exactly two purity seals. This is his shield, I think. Yeah. Purity seals are one of those things that kind of feel like they lose all. Oh, oh my god! Oh. <laughs> all right, I like head. I like head three. Yeah, hooded helmeted is. Oh. <laughs> The helmet's pretty cool as well. I kind of dig that, but hooded helmet, damn. Even hooded unhelmeted is fantastic. Now, see, that's my least favorite. Really? I, I would go, I'd go hooded helmet, unhelmeted, full winged helmet, hood. 
hood face. I'd go hooded, helmeted, hooded, unhelmeted, helmeted, bare faced. Mm. And that's not me sliding the helmet. The helmet is gorgeous. I just, I love that hood. The hood's pretty cool. I just think like the hood takes away from the bare face this because when you got bare face like the beard and such makes him look very knightly and like sort of old fashioned noble and I think the hood takes away from it. See the the Although hood you gives know me what? Uh, like Luke Skywalker type vibes. We were talking about Star Wars earlier. You know what? I was just thinking him hooded, but with his bare face looks like Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, and I am here for that. Now I want to see if there's an option for the Lion Sword. I know we're not going to talk about Star Wars, but we can agree that Obi-Wan's the best Star Wars character, right? Uh, in the modern day, yes. Yeah. Mostly because they killed... Uh... Oh, no, it's just a regular Marine next to him. Okay. Um... He doesn't really have a tactical rock. He just kind of... I mean, he's just standing on a, a dead... Uh... Is that a chaplain or just another? I think it's just a statue. No, that's a skeleton. Like that's a that's a corpse. Yeah, but I think it's like a decorative corpse because look at how its arms are like folded up neat, neat and nicely. Oh yeah. And he is smaller than Robo, which makes sense because you know he's in his tactical life support system. And he also is standing on much bigger tactical rocks. Is his base size smaller than Rabute's? I don't think so. It might, it might be, though. Be. I like his buddies. I love the Watchers in the Dark. Persia Zenos. You have... Except them. What's this saying here now? Of Arcs of Omen, book five. Oh, no, it's just the cover. I will teach them to fear the darkness in which they dwell, and to dread the shadows they believe their allies. For there is no greater hunting the Stygian void than the Lion of Caliban. You think the darkness is your ally? That's what I was thinking too! I was born in the darkness! Molded Molded by it! Damn it, I'm now gonna think that Lionel Johnson sounds like Bane. That's going to be my canon voice for him now. Here comes Lionel Johnson with the steel chair. <laughs> People are saying we're going to get his stats in the re- reveal trailer. It's like, what? No. Oh, we totally are. We're going to get a special rules tool, too. You're going to be able to play him just based off this. They're going to give his points, his power. Yeah, and just feel the feel them with the, um, the Horus Heresy model. So what are we thinking for uh, the stat line? Hold on. I'm trying to see if this image accidentally reveals any other new models. Uh, I'm not seeing it. No, I don't think so. I know GW is that maybe is a new interrogator known. chaplain? I was thinking that, but I think that one exists before, but I don't know Dark Angels models that well. I think that might be a new interrogator chaplain. The red gun barrel on that tank is not nice. Suggestive. Oh, the Blood Angels are here. Dante was promised death. And instead he got Primarist. A fate worse than death. No, Dante, don't cross the Rubicon Primarist. It has a high fatality rate. Oh, hey, you can actually see him up there in the corner. Yeah, that's what I said. Dante got leaked by accident, by the way, um, for those watching. Um... Some guy ordered Dante as a model to, you know, paint the model, and he got accidentally sent the updated version, with, and he you is, know, gave it a horrible paint job, posted it online, and GW's just like, oh, shit. So they had to reveal the new Dante model, like, a week early with the proper paint job. It looks fine. It makes me wonder if this was supposed to be the uh, le- quote-unquote leak reveal moment, like this exact picture. I don't... I think they would have shown off 
Dante. Oh shit, he's gonna fight Andron. How's that gonna work? I mean, he'll. From what I understand, Lionel Johnson like can beat every other Primarch. Yeah. So, what are we thinking for uh, stat line? Um, basically the same as Gilliman, maybe more attacks. I'm gonna guess uh, weapon skill plus skill two plus, obviously. Uh, strength six. Uh-huh. Toughness seven. Toughness seven. Mm. Yeah. Uh, nine wounds. Yeah, obviously. Two up armor save, four up invuln. They're gonna give him that. You can't take more than so many wounds a uh, phase. Leadership uh, like eleven. Yep. Uh, and his sword is going to uh, double his strength when uh, pretty much any time. Oh, hey, it's. Horus Heresy. Yeah, but we do have to watch Horus Heresy. I'm Andy Hall. I work. What if this Heresy is the Terminator the reveal? Studio. That would suck. The Siege of Cthonia. The setting for the Siege of Cthonia book is the planet of Cthonia itself, which is the homeworld of the Sons of Horus. It's actually the homeworld of. I was going to ask if Horus. you knew what Cthonia was. I was. I, I knew it was a homeworld. I just couldn't remember whose small uh, whose homeworld. Themselves the true yeah. sons of Cthonia decide to peel away from the fleet and retake Cthonia. Oh, this is the uh, the, the Civil War of, for the Sons of Horus. Their culture. Uh, GW semi recently did a uh, a narrative event in. So the White Dwarf, with a really where it was deciding what happened to the homeworld the of uh, Mortarian, Barbarus. Then we go into a uh, and they did a bat rep, and whoever won the bat rep would decide when it went down the narrative. Doing at this point and they gave the loyalist side two primarchs. <laughs> <scenarios laughs> so Fucking course yeah. they did. Through the events they gave him the Lionel Johnson and Lehman Russ. Why those two? And it was defending... Takes that was the uh, system. So Death Guard, scenarios, the Iron Warriors, in and the Black book. Legion. It's also got a really Any Primarchs for them? Space Marine nope. Got That's a dumb. New this type of this was happening while the Siege of Terror was going on. The uh, basically, and the Dark thing, Angels and Space Wolves were uh, ripping their way through space and like destroying trader worlds on the back lines to screw their supply lines. Special characters, Garius, Evander. For this Imperial Fists and Baron Asher Haddon for the Sons of Horus. We've got so this is just a campaign book, no new models or anything yeah. like that. And I think this is going to tie into because I don't. This is probably going to tie into Ascended Horus or whatever. The one thing interesting I find about the Horus Heresy is the uh, the fact that this is like the one time you see the. Uh, the Legion split. Mm-hmm. Like, not all Which the I Iron Warriors feel. turn traitor, not all the Death Guard turn traitor, not all the Sons of Horus turn traitor. Yeah. Rylanor is, you know, one of the most famous stories of a uh, loyalist Emperor's Children. Yeah, but he dies like 10,000 years later. Well, not 10,000, but he dies several thousand years after the Horus Heresy. Yeah, but he remained loyal that whole time. Yeah. Yeah, I like how even in uh, this reveal, the uh, Horus Heresy is an afterthought. It's like, yeah, check it out, the oh, lion, okay. big event in uh, in Warhammer 40k. Oh, also we're doing a campaign book for uh, Horus Heresy. They kind of blew their load with uh, the Horus Heresy all at once. It might be a while before it gets any new stuff. Meh. Can you imagine if they dropped the old world? I don't feel like that's going to happen. I feel like that's that gonna be would be. Thing. I I think that's going to be maybe a uh, Warhammer Fest thing. I think they're going to show tenth edition and War uh, and Old World at Warhammer Fest. I could see it. I'm debating whether I want to play Old World. If I do, I'll probably play Tomb Kings. I was going to say if they show Tomb Kings, I might do Old World. They have shown two kings. Like Not actual models. models? But I was going to say. 
because they showed as, an art and they're confirmed to be in it. Yeah, because as far as I'm aware, like they they squatted Tomb Kings because the uh, the molds got damaged. Mm, I, no, I don't think that was true because they just got new molds. I think it was just because they didn't fit in. They never sold well. Tomb Kings never sold. I'm wondering if we're going to get uh, plastic Bretonians. Probably. I want to see if we're going to get an Arcan the Black. If they can release Arcan the Black, I, I definitely think I might go into it. Kind of weird that the Horus Heresy got its big new game reveal release as the books are coming to an end. I still want my sequel of the Horus Heresy as the uh, War in Heaven. Yeah, but it's going to be the Scouring. Yeah. But man, could you imagine Plast or uh, Crook models, uh, Eldar Empire, old ones, Enslavers, Necrontier? I want the 12 part Octarius book with orc protagonists. As the uh, POV. I can't imagine it would be enjoyable to read from an orc POV. There's a there's apparently a book out uh, that with an orc POV and it's pretty enjoyable, but it's like an obvious comedy. Gotcha. Uh, since we talked about them last, I finished um, the Twice Dead King books. First book better? Yes. Holy crap, is the first book so much better. Boy, I told you. That moment with Jasiris at the end. That's, like, why... Spoilers. I'm kind of disappointed with the second book, because the first book's ending sets up, like, that you think things are going to turn out all right. Ooh. Oh. New model. Ah. Oh. What did I say? Yeah, new Seraphon. Soros scars. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no. What's up? Come on, they're ruined. Why? The Raptors' wrists are broken. Oh no, the poor Raptors. Ah, <laughs> oh, there is the Croxigors. Shade, you no, want to no, tell so uh, cool. your little uh, after after we finish watching this? Yeah, I'll, I'll elaborate. Oh, oh man. these guys look like the lizard men from uh, uh, Overlord. Yeah, kinda. Oh, that's beautiful. I love Seraphon. Oh man. Those are some gorgeous models. I was not excited for those, but man, Seraphon so are fun. That is the rest of yeah, the like, Seraphon for if I played any order fast Seraphon. Um so I always delight in seeing them. Yeah. Seraphon okay, and uh, so, Darzakane are my So they're pulling them up. So to explain folks, an actual dinosaur anatomy, Velociraptors, their palms are supposed to like face one another and you see how the like their hands are facing forward and like you know their palms are bleeding back towards their legs or however uh that's something jurassic park came up with an actual dinosaur skeleton anatomy if a, a raptor was doing that its wrists would be broken and once you know it you can't unsee it because the like the the raptor's hands facing down like that don't really serve any sort of purpose because they're not uh, large enough to like, grip and uh, pull stuff towards them. Yeah, like whereas having them like face each other, it's so they can open it wide and grab on like from a wider point away. Yeah, and be able to you know. But I digress. These are awesome. Yeah, they are. Oh, I love those Look drums. Those. I like the foot claw. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka, ooga, ooga, ooga chaka. 
God, Seraphon are such cool models. And is I this like the last the contrast... of the models being updated? Because I think we got new skinks already, right? Oh my gosh. I like I like how they paint the Seraphon a different color than their animal they're riding. That looks great. I've never seen red Seraphon, and I am for it. I've seen green Seraphon. Those are pretty interesting. Yeah, see, I'm used to green or uh, Ooh, turquoise. Al like, look at these Albino Pino Seraphon. Albino. I think, like, veteran Seraphon slash lizard men, be, like, lose their pigments. Like, really old ones. I think that's the thing. With... But Croak is still green. Yeah, but he realived himself. I think he was green before he realived himself. No, he is a skeleton. Which part of him was a skeleton part? Oh, they're talking about it now, apparently. Okay, so apparently if they're born albino, it means like the old ones intervene and they're sacred. Oh, okay, so they're like destined for greatness. God, look at that raptor pose. These are great Utah Raptors, and I will not call them anything else. Well, what else would you call them? Agrodon? Is apparently their names. Deinonychus? Deinonychus? Yeah. Oh, look at these beefy boys. I like That's... that they didn't straight up give them the crocodile mouths that they were kind of doing in Total War Warhammer. They're naked. They're very naked. I feel like with clubs that size, the spikes are kind of entirely unnecessary. Do not question the old one's designs. <laughs> oh man, check out those pickaxes. Yeah. Okay, so these one, these guys got the crocodile now. Which is fine. I, I just like that it's not across all of them. The war spawned. I like how like their weapons are not like traditional fantasy weapons. I'm very stupid. I'm just realizing. I I was saying if I were to play Order, I'd play uh, Sisters of, or uh, Daughters of Cain or Seraphon. I have a, a, an Order army. <laughs> yeah, <It's> so bad. <laughs> <clears throat> The one on the left is my favorite because he doesn't have a tactical. I'm so tired of tactical rocks. Okay, so you see like the Dimetrodon thing in the middle? I don't think, I think that's a left of fantasy. That could potentially be upgraded, updated, but it looks fine. Yeah, I think the Skinks also might still be fantasy, but. Um... Oh, so technically the big dinosaur in the back right is from fantasy but that looks fine also i think that was like late fantasy so yeah yeah late fantasy is acceptable i mean look at nagash what about nagash are you implying nagash is a good looking model yes i'm not implying i'm stating well you'd be wrong because he's a great looking model shade how dare you yeah, well, I didn't hear you refer to Nagash as the Supreme Lord of the Undead. I didn't hear you refer to Nagash as the Supreme Lord of the Undead. I did. It was whispered. Ooh, army box for Seraphon. Ooh. That's a fancy looking one box. I do like it when they make boxes like decorative instead of just here's the army. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's a pretty good starter army. I guess they're just completely um, phasing out skinks. No, those are skink riders. I mean, like the the basic footman skink. I don't think they're phasing them out. I think those are still available. Yeah, but it's kind of like how firstborn are still available. I don't think that's true. Oh, man! Shut up! Ooh, Warhammer Horror. Death. Oh, 
it's the OC arc. Oh my god. Oh my god, that is so Cenobite. Oh my god. Oh, look at the... Oh, werewolves? Uh, vampire Vampire. Werewolves. Oh! <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this confirms they're not getting a major release because this is just two heroes. But damn, damn! I love that Mortizen. I love this trailer. That was fantastic. Very retro. So. Really Jesus Christ, these reveals so far. Wait a minute. I'm going to see if uh, they've posted any of the reveals yet. Yes, they have. Okay, so they did, re they did on Warcom show Lionel Johnson... Uh, so Flesh Eater Courts haven't gotten their war, their tome yet, so I bet they're going to be the other big death release in terms of a bunch of new models. Mortizen Ossifector. I love that, like, crown of fingers around its head. The hand of Nagash. God, it's so true. I love that cover too. I mean, I feel like that cover is just kind of standard at this point. Yeah, but Catacross is cool. Catacross is cool. I like the skin flaps in his crown. Anytime they make elf, uh, outfits using human skin is is a good time for me. Across Weirdly both enough, games. the OCRs are kind of all about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're they're reusing uh, corpses. You know what I always love is when people like paint the flaps of skin different color, like skin tones. When I did my uh, homunculus for uh, my Drakari army, Ivia Volga. Oh, she's a Russian. Uh, what the. F I can never remember the vampire uh, courts. Virkos. Virkos. She's a Virkos. I'm, I'm betting. I mean, given she's got the bats going on and the uh, wolf transformation, yeah, I'm going to guess Virkos. They say apparently she's a monster hunter? What? Or, like, maybe he's an ex monster hunter who got turned? I could see that more. Also, I like oof, her axe. That gap on the hair. Hat thing. Uh, I see it. That axe is the perfect level of uh, simple versus ornate. Well, yeah, I like how the handle is super simple. And then, like, you get to the actual axe and it's got some filigree. I mean, the axe itself is also still a simple design. It's just got the nice filigree to it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm betting Flesh Eater Quartz, because Nighthawk got a pretty big release for third edition. So I'm betting uh, Flesh Eater Quartz will get the other one. That would be nice. Yeah, because they need it. And also, like, it's not even like the entire line needs an update for Flesh Eater Quartz. It's just like, uh, the Terror Geists are great, and then it's like, the the troops need an update. Uh, a couple of characters are okay, but our heroes, I guess, they're called in. Uh, All right, Sigmar. more Sigmar Kino. Oh fuck! I don't it's, uh, remember. Bring Crusades. Malleus. But here we are. Ooh. Trudging through the mud 
to bring Sigmar's light to the realms. Big Cities of Sigmar updates. Finally? Yeah, basically. I like the Conquistador look. Are we just getting the one unit revealed? Probably. So, Cities of Sigmar, that is the new infantry that is on its way for uh, the free peoples, basically, Sigmar's mortal followers. So, just to set your expectations a little okay. bit, we are still a good few months away from the release of this army in front. Oh, okay. But we wanted to kind of keep you updated. As Those the shields, the man. Is to. Uh, we've kind of been following the Cities of Sigmar project as it develops. I'm not a uh, fan of these. We've got the first kind of painted miniatures no? to show you. No. This is uh, some warriors Why from is that? the mortal... I mean, I think I've told you, I've said before, I'm not a huge fan of general sword and sorcery that, stuff. Uh, these people have oh, that's true. Flying shots yeah. And huge and I think these at least, like, these guys look them. like uh, uh, they're well, recently really. deputized if, if militia. For the absolute underdog of the mortal realms, like, these don't the look like trained are, knights. Uh, Given a rusty no. shield, uh, but I do think like the filigree decoration stand out a little bit more than some of the great big crusades, um, like old fantasy stuff that's left uh, over. But that might just be because I'm realms, sick of looking so at them. They are, uh, <laughs> underdogs of the mortal realms. It's good to actually see some interesting models that are basically the opposite end of the spectrum of that sort of often wild and crazy and monstrous element and aesthetic that you see a lot well, of. Even, but even I like the, Sigmar's the monstrous side, wild element. Yeah point of view characters almost by the way did you hear when they were talking about the seraphon they're like oh the age of kragnos awakening has affected the seraphon and it just reminds me of how bad of an addition villain kragnos in the age of the air of beasts is i don't Compared like your tone Necro, because kragnos like, is such a great interesting villain the way he's just too angry to do anything yeah it's a great follow-up to you know nagash in the necroquake That and, is a lot uh, of subsections. I mean, I think it's like 10. <laughs> which is, I think, kind of standard for uh, factions. I need to get into the habit of saying autumn more. You should, because fall is dumb. I say that as someone who still says fall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just to be clear, like, I wasn't trying to take the piss. Yeah. So, yeah, they haven't even announced the uh, Flesh Eater Courts book, so... I'm going to guess there we're going to be with uh, the Cities of Sigmar in Autumn. That'd be pretty fun. Because I'm going to guess a lot of Summer is going to be uh, 10th edition. God, we're already into spring. It this is springtime. This year is just flying. For Hitler. Okay. Terminators. Yeah. Space Hulk? I think this space is going to be Space Hulk. Oh, wait. What was that? No. Oh. Then we've got to get out of here. Oh, uh, it's more squats. Not until we find our iron king. Quick, so these background stuff. Stasis chambers. Beastman in 40k. What? Why? I mean, we've been waiting for Beastman in 40k, but what? Oh, this is kill team. That jump pack looks... Actually, that jump pack looks very, uh... Huge. Starcraft. I mean, that's Votan in a nutshell. Gallo Fall. Holy Didn't shit! Have one called Gallo Dark? Uh, wasn't that, uh, Underdark, uh, Underworlds? 
I am a huge fan of Kill Team. No? And these are two amazing Kill Teams. And we're nearing oh, yeah, Gallo Dark. I know the story of Gallo Dark. Yeah, so this is uh, Gallo Fall, uh, which gives you a hint about what might be occurring in the narrative. This is the last installment in the current season. Oh, it was a Kill Team, team box. Into the Dark season where we're inside spaceships. Uh, and the reason this is the end of the season of this is that the Gallo Dark, the space hulk we've been fighting over for the past year, is crashing. It is crashing into a planet. Uh, and so, yeah. Uh, fucking beast men in 40k. Oh, finally. So they did an entire kill team thing based around space hawks and didn't do gene steer. I mean, we did get that trailer. Uh, I think that's going to be the 10th edition starter box is going to be a kill team or not a kill team, uh, a space hulk terrain with, uh, Excuse me, Tyranids versus uh, Terminators. Probably. But we gotta shill them uh, Leagues of Votan some more. This. Oh. Honestly, no. I'm I'm downplaying it, but I'm actually no. I'm 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 excited for uh, Beastmen in 40k because you know people have been wanting Beastmen in 40k for a while. But uh, have they? Yeah. Uh, I'm fine with Beastman as being like a Necromunda, like a side game thing. They I mean, kind of Kill weird... Team, Kill Team is absolutely a side game. Yeah, I guess. It's also where Squats should have stayed. Yep, that sure is Votan. But yeah, like I mentioned it in uh, the Sigmar video, and I don't really personally care about Beastman that much. Me neither. So it's like, yeah, cool for the people who care about Beastmen. But this is just more Votan. Is that a Lady Votan on the far left? Uh, I think so. The picture is definitely a Lady Votan. I like the robot. Yeah, that looks like, uh, what, what were they called in Starcraft? Raptors? Reavers? Uh, I don't the remember. Terran early game unit with jump with the jetpacks. Weren't they Hellions? Hellion. No, the Hellions were the fire. Like, yeah, they were. I don't remember. I, I'm a, I'm a Zerg main. Me too. And you're also way better than me. These, like... <laughs> If you remove the pistol and the chainsword, these fantasy models. I mean, that's basically what they did with uh, Zangors. Oh, and I guess the grenades. Like, if you remember when they made uh, Zangors for 40k, they just put an extra sprue in it for with some uh, pistols. I've never built Zangors, so oh. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, no, that's Why what they the did. Why is the one holding his shield... Like... Oh, okay, the, the shaman sorcerer looking... And the gas mask one's pretty cool. Yeah, no, these are definitely 40k Bestigors. Um, yeah, no, the Zangors, when uh, when they brought Zangors from Sigmar over to uh, 40k, they literally just included an extra sprue so you could give Zangors chainswords and uh, uh, auto pistols. I like these terrain pieces. I like the skeleton in the one, like, tube. It reminds me of those... Uh, of the uh, Space Hulk... Uh, terrain you have from yeah. that old box. Not that old. I like that uh, ex operation table. That's that's pretty cool. It reminds me of the objective marker. Yeah, the objective marker models. Weren't those from the so space? Hulk? That's those... what I was talking about. Like, for uh, I thought those were from the space hawk box. No, they've periodically released those for many things. Ah, oh, gotcha. Um, the other thing in the Space Hawk box was the dead Terminator on the chair and the cat unit. The dead Terminator the on the chair is a pain. Did the quality just pain. go down, or was that just my imagination? That was just your imagination. I haven't seen a drop in quality. Oh, you know what? It's because I full screened the stream, and now I can see all the pixels. Oh, I see. Got Rainier. Okay, so the Terminator's Tyranids thing is totally going to be the final room. Because they're not going to make this the background and not have it. Yeah. 
it's going to be hilarious. Like, they're, like, 15... I, these are usually about an hour long, right? Give or take. Yeah, if that's the final reveal, it's just like, oh, yeah, 10th edition's coming. Bye. That's going to be... Uh... Bye. <laughs> yeah, but imagine if it's just a new edition of Space Hall. That would be uh, disappointing. People have been betting that that might be a thing. I don't care for Space Hulk, though. Also, was GW the ones making Space Hulk? Or I thought that was, like, uh, Fantasy Flight. No, GW Flight. made it. No, G-dubs. Oh. Oh, oh I was going to say, oh, we haven't guy, seen a new Underworlds. Uh, Underworlds thing yet. So it's like, we still need to see that. Oh, I think this is Zinch. Oh, no, Stormcast. Oh, this is... Oh, my God! It is the new Stormcast, and oh, oh, it's Stormcast and Zinch. This is the new starter set. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Finally, Stormcast models that don't suck. Oh, my God. Did you see that Zinch Sorcerer? Oh. Did you see that Zangor? Weird Hollow. Nice. I might have to get this box. You might have to get this box. And then sell the Stormcast. I don't even know if I'd sell the Stormcast. That was a cool uh, wizard. I'm super excited. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of Zinch models that looks like they really. And yeah, finally some Zinch models that like embody that really awful weird aesthetic. Because like, that's yeah. My big issue with Zinch is that it doesn't have like I mean it's it's weird to say for Zinch, but Zinch doesn't have consistency with its aesthetic. It needs more random mutation. Like either go full on with the random. Wait, mutation. is that? Is that pink horror a wheel? I uh, might be. Yeah, that's fairly normal though. But yeah, uh, Zinch needs to go. Uh, Zinch needs to go into the weird mutations or into the bird theme. It's just and you it's have kind of. You something on the uh, stream video. Froggy forced me to play this. I'm sorry. Oops. Uh, that was me highlighting Zorin the bear. My bad. It the the pink horror wheel thing reminds me of that like mythological creature where it's the lion heads with the legs in a wheel. Isn't that an angel? I don't think so. I think it's a demon or a devil. Like, I know what you're talking about, but I think that might be one of those biblically accurate angels. I don't think it's an angel. I'm pretty sure it's a de it's considered a type of demon. Show us the minis. It is a demon. It is where. Yeah. I know because it shows up as a cat. Oh my god. Oh. Jesus look at those. Christ. I yeah, can't decide that, which one I love the most. That freaky mutant Zangor. The sorceress. That awful the, pink the, horror. That's like opening up in the middle. No, that. Yeah. Oh, these are so good. Fuck me. Oh my god, the one on the left has the Zinch symbol in magic. Yeah, it does. The one on the right is a Zinch symbol. Like, its whole oh body is the Zinch symbol. God, these are so good! This is what Zinch demons need to look like. All of them, across yeah. the entire faction. More of this? Yes, way more of this, please. Zinch would have the best aesthetic if it was consistent like this. Holy shit. I love, like, the mouth, like, the freakiness with the mouths. Like, how the pink horrors on the le far left and right have, like, their eyes are in their maws. You were mentioning Cenobites earlier. This is fucking Cenobite. Well, the main, the middle ones. Yeah, the sorceress is, Cenobite. I've got such gifts to show you. Okay. But yeah, finally, yeah. uh, Sigmarine models that don't suck. These are pretty good Stormcasts. Yeah. I the love middle that, one and the left one I love definitely that are way mask. better than... Are definitely better than the one on the right, though. I mean, the one on the right's just fine. Which, given most Stormcast stuff is not great, being fine is still a step up. I like how quickly they passed on those ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> just immediately we know we we wanted to talk about the the Zangor stuff. It's also, here's Stormcast. more Sigmar stuff. Yeah, it's Stormcast. You gotta have Stormcast. Although I don't think Stormcast have been a uh, a launch box since first edition uh, for Underworlds, have they? No, they were a launch box first half of the third season. Oh, were they? Okay, because like. I know they were the the launch box for uh, Shadespire. They were the launch box for Shadespire and Night. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get be ready for the uh, the next reveal. Yeah, Underworlds is a game that I love playing, but I've never been in a like when Underworlds was getting big. I was either working weekends and then. When I wasn't working weekends, the Rona hit. I and went my crazy with Underworlds. Playing. I own every death team in Underworlds, and like one Chaos team and one Order team. I'm a big fan of it. I help my local store run events for it. Though I've gotten a little, I moved recently, and my new store less people play it. But I'm trying. I'm hoping it gets revived. I think, in terms of GW's living games, it's their best rule set. Plus, it's so easy to buy into. Like, it's what, like forty bucks, and you have a full warband. Yeah, the only pain is the starter kits, and normally you can split those. Yeah, and even the starter kits are like ninety bucks, and you get terrain and two game boards with it, and both uh, like a bunch of starter cards. Like, it's it's a great value for uh, for a simple pick up and play game. Yeah, and, and like it's easy to play, it's easy to learn, uh, but then you. Um, it's hard to master. But it's got very deep, ma- yeah, mastery and tread. I have never won a game, but okay, I also haven't played comes. a game for a while. Is this it? It is it, I think. Uh, this is it, yeah. This is 10th edition. That's Gilliman. Preachers cry from the spires of their temples. What commanders tell the soldiers in their service? The Indominus Crusade meets with triumph after triumph. Day by day we tear Imperium Nihilus from the despoiler's grip. And though we are beset on all sides, with each battle we drive back the mutant. The heritage. Oh. The alien. <laughs> Let's fucking go. As I speak these words, our forces engage. They are really the trying to make the fire continue. Oh, check out those termagants. Alright, come on, kill a marine. Lictor? Lictor? Reclaiming lost worlds, atoning for old shame. Malak? A crusade to cleanse the stars. Oh, no, nope, Zector. Oh my god, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> what is that? That's a screamer killer! That is a retro screamer killer. Yeah, holy shit. Does that mean a new Carnifex box? Maybe, or they're just giving them a new model. It's weird that they give just a Screamer Killer a new model. Yeah. We routed the Tyranids at Bar. Shut up. We broke their high fleet. You did Lictor. not. Soon, they are found. Lictor! Lictor! Yes! <laughs> that is what <laughs> What the? Oh, you almost got the termagants. Wait, were those biomores? Oh, the Relief will not save us. Oh, 
allies will not protect us. Is that a Benetrope? I think these are new Hormagons. Like with tentacle mouths. But it is our hope that will damn us. Yeah, they are. Yeah, what are these? Those are definitely new Hormagons. I wonder if they're like exploding with Hormagons or something. They have like four packs or something on the back. Alright. Come on, please. New Gene Stealer. What are those? New Terminator... What? New this Flying Hydrogen? Oh, that is cool. Oh, my God. Yes! <laughs> Do a Valentine? Oh, Might just be a zone. Do a Valentine. Our people sing of victory. No, that that zone, that, 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 zone, that, that thing, thing just fucking nuked that that library. Victory. Do a Valentine. Do a Valentine. Victory. As humanity rages against the dying of the light. <laughs> Spring players ask me to split their box. Yep. A new edition of Warhammer Everyone knew. Uh, knew. I'm actually surprised that they're announcing the no, 10th no, edition right now. So good, I gotta tell you. Growing up my whole life is. Oh amazing. my god. So that many... was. Give Jesus. us models. Give us models. Holy shit, Give. I want. Oh, you know, I should probably keep the uh, commentary on just in case they talk about if they're Primaris uh, Terminators. Oh, yeah, that was that was the grim dark 41st Millennium to a T. And that's that interesting. They're talking about how the fact that, like, tonight, this is I'm a lot grimmer and bleaker than the trailer for 9th Edition. It was. Yeah, but because that, like, 9th Edition, the like, the Sisters of Battle showed up and saved the day. Yeah. Well, the Marines showed up. Or, yeah, the Marines showed up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah here this the Marines one, got killed. Yeah, they did. Their new Terminator showed up and then got torn apart by the Doom of Malentai. And their new Librarian showed up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. My nuked. Like, the guy's... The, the Librarian's face melted. I mean, we'll tell you a lot, but first... Here we go! Okay. Warhammer 40,000 is the world's most popular tabletop miniatures game. Okay, let's see what we're getting. Players command armies of genetically enhanced super soldiers, brutal monsters, powerful aliens, and destructive war machines. Is that to play out spectacular battles in the 41st millennium. No, I think those are just guardians. Our mantra with this new edition has been streamlining. We've been listening to the community and that's a large part of why we've decided to focus the game as much as possible. How can we keep the tactical depth and richness that players love? Alternating turns. Examine every rule in the game. Does this need to be here? Or Less is there another way that we can achieve the strategy? To secure victory, you must understand your strengths and the strengths of your enemy. We fundamentally change the data sheets from to the ground to up, making them much more accessible and really focusing the rules onto the data sheet themselves. What the team's been able to do with this is really look at every unit in the game, make it has a really clear battlefield role and a thing for it to do. Whoa. And then write the right rules nope, for it. No your toughness. Your data sheet rules all fit on a single card and your what? rules will fit on a single page. What I think we want to ensure is that everyone we're going going to Sigmar. as soon as possible after the edition was launched. So Everything wounds happen, on a certain value. All of the rules for everyone's armies via the data sheets and their army rules They're will be available for free. From the darkness between the stars, a twisted mockery of evolution spawns fresh horrors. It's a galaxy at war. This is the onset Those of the Imperium like War. Ah, the fourth Tyrannic War. This is the largest Tyranid swarm ever recognized in the galaxy, emerging when no one's expected. The the Pacific, Pacific, Pacific. Pacific. To be a warrior of the Emperor in such times is to face an array of nightmares. Those were not new horror managed to achieve with this Did you see that? It's a game that players of 140,000 will love for its tactical depth what, what and choices, those, then? but it's streamlined and plays much quicker. The end result is faster while still keeping the In the video, it looked like new ones, but like that 
that picture, that like the, the picture they had, was well, those were for the last 35 yeah. years. Photo. They've never seen anything like this before. Yeah, but they They've still were shown new. conflict at this scale. Immersive and thrilling new gameplay. Discover a major ah, sweet, new fourth narrative in the war. fourth Tyrannic War. I was wondering when edition of war they would get the new one, considering so many new has come summer. out. Come on, models, 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 models. That's the the Warhammer 40,000 studio had to say about some of the changes. It sounds very exciting. It's very exciting. We'll talk about some of them in depth, in fact, in this very live stream. And models. Uh, it's it's fascinating to me because there's a whole... Put in chat on their stream to show the models. Not least of which is what's going on. Show Tyranid models. Of the 41st yeah, millennium, as well as what's happening with the rules. What is a streamlined experience? And yeah, it looks like they're doing uh, free War Scrolls, or free data sheets like uh, the War Scrolls. Uh, as well as what is it, what the free rules mean because there's a lot more to that than what yeah, you might there's expect. A, there's a lots of lines there thrown away which have quite, quite big implications. Yeah, we'll take uh, some time to get to you, but but I feel like the one thing we're missing is, well, the reason we've all miniatures. got into the hobby yeah, in the yeah. first place. Yes! Why don't we take a look at some miniatures? Yes! I don't care about the Terminators! Yep, those are Terminators. Yes, very much Terminators. Thank you. Thank you for one new Terminator model. Really? So, Terminators are back. These are the first company of the Space Marines. Each one of them, each one of those chapters has Terminators. They are the best of the best of the Space Marines. Yes. Um, and Thank the new you. miniatures uh, are absolutely what Terminators yep. always were in your mind. Yep. These are, those are Terminators. indomitable walking powerhouses of destruction. And they don't um, look tiny like anymore. Juggernauts of hate and Looks like Terminators. I the love the aesthetic, design. but they're really Terminators. Up to speed with the yeah. development of the miniature range as a whole in the new edition, uh, as well as the way that the miniatures themselves have been scaled over time. And I'm especially excited because as I was watching the chat during some of the videos earlier, I saw a bunch of people saying, oh, I thought we were going to see new Terminator miniatures. And well, you okay, they're like Star the Wars text and crawl on their legs. It's funny to me. They do all of the justice to the original sculpts. They do all of the justice to the aesthetic and the feel. Are they the are they firstborn they or Primaris? The scale that, that really justifies what they are in yeah, the so war. They, they stand really well in the army. They they, they stand taller than um, a Primar oh. Primaris Marine. Uh, one of the things that's worth saying about these Terminators is that these aren't necessarily. Um, Primaris Terminators, they're not necessarily first-born Terminators. Any okay. Space Marine can earn the right okay. to wear a suit of Terminator armor. Okay, they so they're still first-born, but there's also going to be Primaris Terminators. Okay. Yeah, so that, okay, that's probably the best thing they could have done. Yeah. Because now we can just, you can decide whether or not you want these new Terminators to be Primaris or not. It would be really cool is to make a chapter where, like, it's prim primarily Primaris, but all of their first-born, because of the veterans, have become the first Company term. Being cheeky when we say that we've actually handled both. So definitely. And for new firstborn miniatures and for primary. Kinda. Because they're both. Would, they are. When all I don't know. I think they could be an interesting Terminators. cultural yeah. clash yeah. or like yeah. a, a kind of thing set up where like the, they the they honor their firstborn. So all the firstborn are, are Terminator. Where even Belisarius call after ten thousand years of fiddling around with the all extra hydraulics in the legs on the Terminator suit. No, Those are interesting. That's 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 something that's been there for a while. Shards of the Emperor's own armor. Has it? I just I guess I've never noticed them. A bit more detail, and you can see that like every single element of it, all like the these are still Terminators. And yes. The Stormbolter and the helmet. Very much. They are recognized. They are really okay, talking a lot about Terminators because they're Terminators. So much and not new Tyranids. You know, so we're bitching, cooler. but when you, see these guys you know, the we got to remember we are in the mini minority. And obviously, the Terminators come with all sorts of cool people with taste. Power fist and Yes. Remember, like, Marines outsell every other faction it's just, it's just combined. It's such an iconic... Yeah. Back in but, uh, oh, man. They stand head and shoulders above uh, Primaris. I think it's good to highlight the difference in scale between the Terminators of old and the Terminators of today. And you can kind of see in this how their bulk and their size has not rendered the old Terminators to be tiny. I still think Scarabs look better, Scarab Recall Terminators. Within the range of miniatures but uh, I do like how big these guys feel. I like how much thicker they made their legs. Yeah, That's what's really, really selling it for me. Off against something like the 
the, the more recent Chaos Terminators, uh, some of the kind of the bigger character models. So you know, more, once they come out with like a, you know, something like a for years, game, you're like, you know, oh, this model's really fine. It doesn't need an update, like that, leading an update, and, guys. and obviously the old one, chapter, like, okay, yeah, that's a noticeable. Way. Have their own particular you know, special brand upgrade. So Sometimes I'm just like, no, I still don't see a reason, but uh, yeah. The, um, the Ultramarines that have a particular beef against the Tyranids. They do have quite a beef. They, they've got some serious beef. Um, but so Why would the Ultramarines have the beef with the Tyranids? And these models allow you to be as cool right. as the Terminators always should have been. I, I couldn't it's not like the Ultramarines yeah. called the Tyranids. Shut up. Here it comes. Give it to me. Give me the Doom of Malentai. Oh, there's an army Terminator! Oh, they are new Termagants! So why do they show old ones in the picture? God damn, those have the detail they needed. So, brand new Termagants. New Termagants. So Termagants are the most numerous um, also new forces of the hive mind. They spawn them out in their millions, in their billions, across the planets they're seeking to consume. Um, and the new Termagants are... Uh, a a glow up, basically, of the, of the termagants we've seen. Hey, me too! Really? Eddie, a little known fact is that a termagant was the first model I ever painted, and now I can't wait to paint Ooh. Of them. My yeah, first model was a, so, uh, a Drakari Tablet the Warrior. The level of detail on these is so crisp and so lovely, uh, and these are very much the vanguard of a new Oh, I like the reticulated necks! Uh, faction is going to get absolutely spoiled this year. If you are a Tyranid fan, there are so many new plastic kits. It's the most interesting that they kept the flesh for exactly the same. As a company. I I'm excited about Did it you hear that? I'm a Tyranid fan as well because there's an enormous amount of work. The, the most new amount of kits. Feel, both I coming heard. Tyranids. Um, and of course, anyone who watches a cinematic trailer should probably watch it carefully yeah. or rewatch it a few times carefully. But I think... One of the things that's most exciting oh, is that man. Is they look sort of bigger too. Natural alien look at those muscles. Alien of they're like races unknowable, the galaxy. right? So they, Almost unknowable. Yeah. And there's some definite. Uh, look at the amount of detail on that kite. No I like that the tails are no longer just straight. Very truly unknowable element of the Tyranid with the new range. I'm so excited to see. I kind of like the straight tails because it very much felt like a pack. Like just going straight yeah, forward. Give you want a sense of like which new okay. Somebody got a free trim. They do still have tough. The, uh, cinematic. There are okay. Some returning favorites. But they don't have like some strength. Maybe um, haven't had the time. I'm gonna to guess the strength is gonna be incorporated into the weapons. Uh, hey, you don't have to scream it to me. Probably. Yeah, and there are some. There are some oh, things we've never yeah, seen before. It. So one of the the hallmarks of the Tyranids, I suppose, is their continuous. Hey, flash wars are AP zero again. Face of challenges. Uh, and the, the high fleet has definitely taken that on board. Uh, with this I guess that makes sense. Flesh wars don't really scaling against penetrate the armor; they penetrate flesh. A long way from its very tried and true, the, the trusty, rusty old uh, plastic kit. It hasn't been outscaled in the development. Huh. It's still the same termagant. So it fits into the I'm looking at this data sheet. So Apparently, really termagants really can take ripper swarms yeah, with. Really so Ooh! Like, I've, got, I've got quite a lot of termagants. And it's like they, they act as a bodyguard. Time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm targeted by an attack if it contains uh, a yeah. oh, That attack must be allocated to that model. Uh, so, so, you think they're going to the discontinue of, the rippers uh, as individual model units? Model and you can, I you guess. Can see now that, like, contrast on that I can. Or like a, a wash or a dry brush or something. God, like look at that glow up. Really nice. Yeah. So even though it's really I don't know how I feel about that because rippers are kind of like the deep strike troops unit for Tyranids. Yeah, but they kind of ruined Termagant or Rippers in Ninth Edition. What does that both partially because like people would just use it as cheap objective grabbers? Yeah, so, so the tourney the scene ruined Rippers. Yeah, fair enough. The new tyrannic war. It's the fourth tyrannic war against the tyrannic. They cut down on the number of keywords. Good. The of the Good. Is that was blue. This is called OC on the stat line now. Inclusive narrative that kind of has a big culmination, a big showdown between the forces of the Angels of Death. And the forces of chaos, and then what we've and done with the leadership nine. up the lens of what's going on in nine the galaxy, plus. moved to another part. In this instance, it's, it's the western rim of the galaxy. So if you're western rim, if you're yeah, if you're familiar, oh with my western god, rim, wait, they do. They come from the east usually. They come from the east. So if you're familiar with your Warhammer forty thousand uh, lore, uh, you'll know that generally speaking, the Tyranid invasions have all Except come for from Leviathan. the galactic uh, east, and they've kind of picked off McCrag and the. Yeah, it, the was tower in, it was always told as the beginning of this tendrils with the high fleet in theory behind it. Yes, yeah, so, so what you've, we've got now with the fourth tyrannic war is 
the forces of the Leviathan, uh, the Imperium has been fighting them for quite a long time, and they thought they kind of got them. Leviathan. They fought them at, um, at Baal. Broke their fleets at Baal. Yeah, they, they thought they might have, like... Was there a behemoth at Baal? The peak of Leviathan um, halted, no. and that's absolutely not true. What we're seeing now is from the other side of the galaxy, this enormous great tendril, this sweeping mass of Tyranids, the largest... Someone in the, com in the Twitch chat is just like, Nids remember the universe is in 3D yeah, so, and flew so around. Is kind of crushing both oh, the galaxy is so galaxy. screwed, man. The galaxy is literally in the jaws of High Fleet Leviathan. This is yes. confirming that the Tyranids have, like, like the galaxy... ...absolute <laughs> scale and cosmic horror of the Tyranids. But what are they fleeing from? Huge, but this is like... We thought it was just coming from the one direction, and actually the places they already ate. Around, there it's a from all huge sides. and stunning change for me in terms of reflecting sort of the scope, scale, alien nature, and sort of almost the, the terminal threat that Tyranid represent. It's not an unknowable who knows how much more it is. They're so large that the entire galaxy is now surrounded, effectively. Absolutely, yeah. I love it. Just, a, just yes. another apocalypse to add. Get to that good, apocalypse. good Tyranid lore. Well... Should we talk okay, a little rules. bit about let's, rules? Let's talk rules, yeah. And yes. Uh, it's one of those things we're not sure. Anyone would wonder how much will we talk about the rule, or reveal, right, or the cinematic. But we'll do that. We'll talk a little bit about what does new 40K bring from an actual playing of the game perspective. Uh, first one is we mentioned that the game has been streamlined. It's been simplified. The game is not simple. Let's remember this is still Warhammer 40,000. It's still the, the game. It's still bloated and, uh, and it convoluted. Has all of the hallmarks of Warhammer 40,000 that, that our community has grown up around uh, enjoying recreating battles in the battlefield. But from a simplification perspective, there's been an enormous amount of work done to make the game less dense, to make redundancy and minor rules spread across numerous publications less complicated, and to streamline everything into sort of, we'll talk about it a little bit as we go through a couple of these, these next elements of the game. Um, you know, a good example is instead of having, you know, let me think of it, if you were to run a Space Marine detachment today, Space Marine's army, you might have a book that has several pages of stratagems, you have several pages of psychic powers, you have warlord traits, you have relics, you have all these rules and layers of rules. And then it's if you want them to be... It's quite a lot to learn, it's right? It's a lot. Before and if you, you want to make the them table. ultramarines and add that on top, then you've got more pages of rules, stratagems, and so on and so forth. What we didn't want to do is get rid of the value of things like stratagems and enhancements to your your warlord or to some of your key character units but they've been simplified down so that when you're playing you'll have one full page spread open and on that one full page spread oh you'll have good a stratagems about six on average per army as well six as on average per army oh my god your relics i'll and, take it uh, yeah sub faction will effectively to whatever your army may be um, and if you choose to play a different grouping let's say you go from ultramarines to the ultramarines first company instead of adding a whole nother book to the whole experience you'll take that one page oh page interesting page with a different ones so that you're always working with. A so really it looks like the, what stratagems you have depends on subtraction. You I'm okay with and that. Abilities. And then That's, the number okay. of different stratagems, rules, and other things have been taken and put back onto the data sheet to really bring the units to the forefront of the game as an experience again. So as opposed to putting down your units and then playing a lot of the game, as it were, from the front of the book, um, there's a greater emphasis for many of those rules. See, these are all termagants in the picture. Yeah. The overall game experience. We That's what threw me off. Oh my god. The picture was yeah. streamlined. The, the yeah. Lord Solar is about battle to get tentacled. Moved into the command phase and rejiggered entirely. Something called Battle Shock, which we may talk about a little bit more here. Um, the psychic phase has been broken down into the actual. Yeah, that. Of the rules and that. Uh, so not a psychic phase there anymore. isn't that's an actual key, psychic phase. Phase. Those guard are not in a good position right now. Psychic abilities are big. Huh, they got rid of the psychic phase. They still work in some ways. <laughs> psychic powers work today. But I like the psychic phase. phase. Excuse that me. In very different ways to different so, armies. so, for example, a librarian might have smite. Okay, so psychic vision now. Okay. Psychic Yes, with reflections of things like I'll the it. nature of using it at a very high, high level, with the potential to inflict mortal wounds and other things, but still focused as basically a shooting attack. Whereas, you know, some of the psychic oh, I don't know if I like that. You know, they're more baked into an ability within the data sheet as opposed to, you know, an entire phase oriented around yeah. the functionality, and it better reflects. I understand why they did it because if you're playing a non psyker like a Primaris, uh, get annoying, term, or like if you're only slightly psyker and the other person's very psyker. Yeah, but not every so psychic so attack is uh, a ranged psychic attack, an attack. It's, it's like a really good ranged psychic attack. Absolutely. And as, it's as well as a range of other psychic abilities. As well, as opposed to just a generic psychic ability that every other psyker has. Yeah, and, uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about... Um, and what about, like, psychers who there? also have really um, strong attacks? We'll, we'll like, dive into all of these rules in a someone in the, the on the Twitch is like, what about Grey Knights? Site over the coming uh, weeks and months. Um, but I think one of, one of the things... Because, like, really we like shit on Grey Knights all the time, but, like... ...is that you don't lose models in morale anymore. You don't have 
Like, no, you, you don't. don't. Fail a morale tech and actually and, just take. Oh, and just that's the interesting. That is interesting. It, it works much more like a unit that's been broken up and banged up within a very fast-paced sort of almost modern firefight. And okay, I like that. Like as well with rules and with grabbing. I mean, objectives I play Tyranid, so it probably won't matter too much. Additionally, it has much more relevance throughout the game, whereas today you might, you know, kill off most of the models in the unit. They barely pass the morale test. A couple models survive, and they go hide in a corner in an objective all game, and they're basically fine from then on out, even though most of the unit's been devastated. Battleshock will have less of an impact on models disappearing from the board and more of an impact on testing their metals. How reliable the is that game. unit now in, in yes. the battlefield? Basically. And once a, a unit oh man, to a certain degree, it may be if you fail Battleshock, are you going to be unable to uh, take like objectives? They hold themselves together in the face oh. of or maybe like get stat back. penalties too. Um, um, should, should we talk about stratagems a little bit? There's definitely all new index stratagems. rules. Remember, there's many more stratagems that are core stratagems. Um, so we're going back to early 8th uh, edition. In gameplay, whereas I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with that. That was terrible. Yeah, and I if you love decide to play a different I variation of it. that faction, I loved it. you'll take those six stratagems away and replace them with six new ones. That God, the Catan Shard of the Void Dragon is such a cool model. Imperial Fists or something similar to that effect. So, so you have a, a very common, you know, a list of common stratagems that everyone can use, and that's a little bit bigger than it is now. Um, and then you have a much smaller list of ones that are specific to the faction. Yep, and they're much more focused on really impactful stratagems you want to use on a regular basis. There's also fewer command points in the game by a significant amount. I wonder margin. if they're going to do the so uh, AOS. Much more on using the right stratagem at the right time rather than dumping all of your command points on turn one into a series of combos that makes it feel like you're playing against, again, the front of the book as opposed to the yeah. armies and the data sheets that are on the tabletop. Also, let's be very clear. We've re-indexed the game. All of the index rules are free and are free on day one, as are all of the core rules to play the game. So that means on the first day of the new edition, if I've got an orc army, which I do, mm -hmm. I can get my. It is core weird that they're doing another big my data sheets for my orcs, and I can play a game with that army on the first yep. day. Of and the all your I mean, it well took there's nothing in how long for uh, the game, game, game to get so with bloated with that you need four bo books, books at a time, <laughs> like uh, so so seventh edition was. Also, the ability to purchase yeah. indexes because if you want to have them, you can have actual physical data sheet cards. No, so I'm I'm fully like okay with the, the full reset. Yep. A little, little bit of like Sigmar. Age of Sigmar. So all of, all of the yeah, that's fine. Compacted onto a single card. Yep. And I'm you glad now that I haven't bought my uh, ninth edition codexes for most of my armies. Data sheets instead of the because you know you have I have eight separate codexes I need to buy for 40k instead of lugging the whole book because again you just have that one. I'd say nine, but fallen aren't an army anymore. Your actual army rules and stratagems, and then your individual. Can you imagine that the people was, who just bought the thing, World Leaders Codex? Um, we were being told from the community was like... Alright, so let's look at this. The guard this codex. Game, but there's a lot of rules to carry around, right? There's, yes. there's rules bloat in terms of the things you have to remember, but also the amount of... So yeah, of toughness you three... To when you play a game, and you've got less things save to remember, five plus, less things to know about your opponent's attacks army, one, leadership eight plus... A variety of it in terms of... Which is weird. What is DC? And the that? building itself, as we just... You gotta know. I think that's OC. Back to that one image we had just before this one. Army building itself has simplified... Um, and it's when we say it's simplified, it is a much more accessible thing to get into. And we've done a lot of interesting things. Bring to make back the old force org chart. To build a diverse army as opposed to just taking only the best units, uh, or on paper the best units. And the way it's bring back detachments. You take a character, oh, your warlord. You take up to three of any data sheet, or up to six of any basically troop or dedicated transport data sheet, and that's it. Um, and so you need wow, so now I can't even bring all of my uh, Slanesh demonettes anymore. <laughs> no, they set up to six for Slanesh. Yeah, I have 80. I have 80 demonettes. Well, they can only be taken... We'll see what the index, well, we'll what the index uh, does to their squad size. I mean, unless they nerf the squad size, from what I understand, Slanesh demonettes are designed to be made, uh, taken in groups of 10. There's many different units that... Instead of um, being a stratagem where after your unit shoots and targets a unit, now your other units get a benefit against it. There might be a key unit that provides that buffer benefit. Oh my god, so they're making the combined arms crossfire a thing across the entire faction, or, or across the entire game. Is oftentimes, by design, much more impactful and useful and interesting. I don't think that's what they said. I think they said about the certain other. units unlock so certain been set of build. But well, they were also yeah, saying, like, shooting at an army gives benefits to the rest of the faction. Your focus for how the data sheets have been built and how the army rules have been designed. So every unit basically has got their their thing. Like they've got the thing yes. they bring to your army. So um, absolutely, in, in a way that at the moment you might be relying on stratagems or something to do a particular uh, niche or to fill a particular need. Good. A lot of the time, that the unit I hated will giving a unit abilities to, to so stratagem. Take that particular unit. Much greater focus on your army doing the work of being an army as opposed to uh, how many. How can I take the most optimal units and then use yep. my stratagems or the sort of front of my book to do all of the work. 
Yeah, so I think we had an example uh, data sheet uh, that we might be worth talking through some of the things. Okay, it looks so this quite is a different from the one they showed earlier. Data sheets are heavily different and with the uh, with the decision to index, there's also the opportunity. Oh, termagants can get spine fists looks and devourers. Uh, here you can see the new termagants, uh, yeah. which is quite cool. Couldn't they already? Um, they have, uh, an Wait, twin links! ...on how the unit behaves and is very thematically tied I, I, to them. I, I guess one of the things... That's a universal special role. ...into it is that uh, the data sheet does look quite different, but actually the effect in terms of... Um, what it does in the game is is not a million miles away from the, the way that Warhammer 40,000 works today. So no, it's going to seem very familiar. It's not a move to something like Age of Sigma, or wherever unit hits or wounds on a fixed number or something like that. Um, instead, it's still very similar to what you'll remember or recognize from Warhammer 40,000 today. Uh, oh, dude, the they're putting the ballista the skill in the uh, uh, on the weapon profile. That and yeah. Rather than yeah, saying they still exist, when making an attack with this roll, subtract really one from the hit roll. Fighter. That allows us to That's do a nice. wide variety of things with the way that the units are designed, such as also like I think chain swords or shooting weapons also have number of attacks versus a space marine sergeant yep. power fist. Those things can all be somewhat different, and they can reflect the way the individual models work rather than being tied hard tied to the. Individual wow, this is simplified without being so we've, we've stupefied. Got a few questions in the chat about um, mm -hmm. OC. Do OC. Talk a bit about that. Objective control. So OC effectively establishes the value that each. Model oh, has that's what OC is. Range of an objective marker. So a unit of 10, now things like objective secured as a rule, those are yep. gone. Instead, it's reflected with the individual units. Oh, that's interesting. So, each that is so one term again like counts that. as two models for holding an objective. Something that I'm betting troops are probably really like usually two or three. Yeah. Value of one. But it also means things like knights, which have a much higher particularly value. struggled with objective control, yep. can actually now count as... I wonder if they're going to do um, degrading the unit profiles high, again. And they could... You know, one grot doesn't one knight sort of thing. It, it's definitely an improvement in the way we design models for function because, again, when you look at... It's going to be interesting up, how the leadership so roles are because it's leadership 8 plus. Focus on what does that mean? This unit may not have the same damage up as another unit, but it's much, much better at grabbing objectives, which yeah. still remains... I mean, maybe I, if I it's not a uh, degrading profile, right? so you roll 2d6. If you roll more than an 8, you fail. Yeah, that's going to be one of the most efficient ways to fill the... That'd be pretty high for the term against Well, I guess that's... And we've done some things to make the units actually reflected in their data sheet abilities in a very interesting way that reflects how their actual lore works. There's a whole bunch of work done to look at their lore, at their IP, and make sure that the abilities actually reflected that. Mm -hmm. In the case of the scuttling term against it, are very sneaky, can tend to be difficult to pin down. When you get within nine inches of a unit, the unit gets to move in a so reaction. That's very reactive. Very reactive. Oh, and good. there's a ton of addition of reactive abilities and reactive stratagems. And Did reactive, they just say if you move uh, within nine inches, the, the unit gets to react? A lot more of an no, look at the Skulking Horrors roll. So once per turn, when any unit ends a uh, and there normal, is advanced, or fallback move within nine inches, it's used not within an engagement range, it can make a move. So that the game itself is a much more dynamic experience when you play. Oh, that's going to uh, suck to lock down shooting like armies. The, the stats. So I think one of the things worth saying well, is that because it might depend on really how they change charges. Because that's a thing that's uh, in like Age of Sigmar, Martin. And it's not as big as the DLC thing. Across the entire game. There so are two major changes that are worth focusing on. That one. Okay, the lethality is down. Good. Is down. It doesn't mean that it's down to a degree that will might remind someone of additions many moons ago. You still don't want to stand out in the open and in front of the You're probably going to get shot in the yeah. open if you do stand in the open. But the game is going to be a little bit less lethal than it is today. Uh, cover is going to work a little bit differently. We're going to talk about AP is a little bit rarer. AP is a little bit lower on average. And then there's also a cover is kind of pointless at this point. Toughness when it comes to larger monsters and vehicles. Today is very much the case where you tend to see very few things that are different from, like, for instance, toughness seven. Yeah, you cut out so about eight, don't you? It's you very, do. very rare to have anything that's higher than eight. So if your army has a large amount of access to strength eight weaponry, strength seven weaponry, it really is able to wound almost anything in the game pretty reliably, and that's no longer going to be the case. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, Eddie, but there definitely is a much, much higher level of toughness. Well, oh. I fire a last oh. cannon. I fire a last cannon at your termagant. I hit. I fail to wound because the last cannon uh, somehow doesn't kill and vaporize that single termagant. Gosh, I sure have a lot of strength eight in this army. I guess I wound everything on threes or better, and so that it kind of brings back not quite the same as armor values back in the day, where certain things couldn't hurt anything. But a much more robust stratification. Yeah, of the so you, you could, I would example, love a return to armor values. And that's gonna solve the I love how that system was designed up, only for real yep, vehicles. Because while toughness went up on many units, in many cases, strength did not go up on many weapons. So a plasma gun has not changed materially in its strength. Its AP might have even changed downward. Whereas the units that used to be wounded on threes by a supercharged plasma gun hmm. may only be wounded on a five by them. Oh, oh God. 
some substantial changes right. involved there. And, of course, the data sheets you're going to see. Many That's going to be so frustrating. Come, fire a plasma gun, yeah, overcharge it. it. That you can talk all about it. Only yeah, so they mentioned there's vehicles with, like, toughness above 11. So it sounds like they're increasing the toughness of all the big stuff. Boarding actions and boarding patrols from the latest Arcs of Omen books. They are compatible with the new edition of Warhammer 40,000. Didn't you like the boarding patrol rules? I've never gotten to play it. It looks interesting, but I've never gotten to play it because I can't find they will Abaddon. absolutely still be able to do that in the new edition. Yep. So you can take all those recently constructed armies with you uh, as we go. So that would be and really All of the boarding patrol rules that are in the Arcs of Omen books are fully compatible. They were designed to be that way so that if you've been investing in those books and the amazing story they've told and the rules themselves, none of those are invalidated by the release of the new edition. They haven't been taken away. It's not a, a short-term use. They'll be usable well into the future. Yeah, which is really cool. Um, and then there is another um, interesting way to play Warhammer 40,000. So Combat Patrol is a new thing in, in uh, Warhammer 40,000, a brand new way to play the game. Uh, and the way that this works is different from the way that Combat Patrol works today. Why? Um, the, it, the way it works is that you pitch Combat Patrols against each other. So the way you choose your army is you pick up any of the Combat Patrol boxes that we make. That's going to be imbalanced as hell. Yeah, yeah it is. Holy hell. That box, and it is balanced and pitched against other Combat Patrols uh, in a similar way that you might play something like Kill Team, where you wow, have a no. list of units. Um, the the rules for Combat Patrol are a little bit different from Warhammer 40,000, so uh, maybe slightly simpler in places. There might be slightly less access to, to some of the choice. Um, but fundamentally, um, you are playing Warhammer 40,000 at a very accessible level. And it's really cool for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them is that if you want to start a new army, it gives you a very, very accessible way to... Um, Some of these combat to, patrols to, are to so much base. stronger so than other combat patrols. What the fuck? Like 2, points worth of yeah, but you know what? Start rolling dice new edition, new data sheets. Um, you can play combat patrol and have a really good... I mean, unless Drukhari, for example, are getting the major army. nerfs. Um, like, this the is... The other thing is that if you like to dip your toe into lots of different forces, so... Or Admech? Poor Admech. I like playing with Chaos, but I also like my Orcs, and I quite like <laughs> those new Eldar models that came out, and I like a bit of this. Oh my god, can you, can you imagine the Tyranid one? Armies, uh, again, without What's in the Tyranid box? So Nothing but... Full forces, uh, um, a Hive Tyrant, I, I Warriors, and then like 30 Termagant. When we even talk about the differences between Combat Patrol and, and sort of the full-size 40k game... Yeah, very, I very don't much. know about this. And Nine Rippers. <laughs> Um, and what you might see as a change is because Combat Patrol is meant to be both uh, streamlined and easy to play and also accessible to newer players, uh, you know, you might have a unit that has two data sheet abilities, um, A and B, and they are relatively simple in the Combat Patrol. When it moves up to the full size of 40k, that same data sheet is going to have basically the same abilities, but maybe a little bit more robust. Okay, so apparently the rules are simplified. The full -size game, it's not gonna yeah, they mentioned that. I just, I still don't know about this. Easily navigate into full size 40k. We'll see, I like small size games. Actively balanced pretty aggressively every day by the studio so that whatever combat patrol you want and the rules for it are free as well and will evergreen be free um you buy that okay so this is obviously just the here's how you get into the game thing the weight is out of the box it's, it's a really, really i guess nice the it's a new power level 40K. um we've got some one question that's popping Sounds up like a lot it. in the chat oh god people are uh, spamming the same uh, comment um, in the forge chat World models for Warhammer 40, will also get free data sheets okay forge world is carrying over um, so if you've got your um Gargantuan Squigoth, if you've... It's a great kit. Why would I mean, not, right? why would, of love course it. Eddie brings up the Gargantuan Squigoth. It's one of the things people spamming in chat. Time. You can still use it. Yeah, it's so all Forge World rules will be taken care of. They'll be free, of course, uh, just like all the Index rules are. People are complaining board. about how uh, 10th edition is getting everything. announced right after the Guard Codex uh, works, came out. Uh, 100%, um, which is one of the important things we're really excited about, is a fully functioning army builder. The all Guard the released the before the edition did. Free and free and <laughs> yeah. So we're fairly excited about all of these new things that are coming before. It should make the game more accessible uh, and more easily gotten into than ever before. If you play today, uh, you will be able to play fully with no caveats or asterisks on day one of the new edition. Uh, one of the questions that's popped up quite a lot I just wanted to address is Crusade. Okay, good. So Crusade, I love Crusade. is absolutely, definitely still a part of Warhammer 40,000. Very, very big part of it. There will be some ways to... If you've been crusading for the past three years and you've, you've had a good time, you've taken your troops through all sorts of battlefields to the distant corners of the galaxy, um, there will be some ways to port that army into the new edition, which yep. is pretty cool. Um, there will also be... My buddy from uh, my Crusade, old town just so messaged me. I don't know if you still owe me that line model or not, because he's coming. I'm just like... <laughs> did... did we bet first on first that? Like, it sounds like something I'd bet on, but... If you enjoy Crusade, and lots of people do, there is still definitely ways to engage with that in the new edition. It's fair to say that Crusade was... It's one the of guy the I uh, picked yeah, up Fallen yeah, for. Oh, the previous edition, and I don't yeah, think it's going anywhere. 
um, we're doubling down on all fronts, really, whether it's in our event scene with things like the Grand Narrative, whether it's in organized plays, we start to connect more of a narrative element to that all sort of globally, or whether it's... I'm so glad global, Crusades are out, so around that. I had, I, I, most of my ninth edition team playing was... Preview. We'll give Eddie and his team all the time in the world to share all this excitement over the coming weeks to come. Yeah, so... Uh, New edition of Warhammer 40,000 will be coming in summer. Uh, we have a few weeks and months yet before we get there. Um, so keep uh, so checking out warhammercommunity.com. Uh, you can sign up to a newsletter to find out all the news as it happens. We've got loads of stuff to show you, including new miniatures. We'll talk about all the new rules we've mentioned in loads more detail. Um, all the new lore. Uh, this everything is a two-hour video. Um, yeah, it is. Log on warhammercommunity.com. And uh, yeah, keep up to date. We could talk here all night long. Thank you for getting up so early or so late, depending upon. Oh, apparently for Secret Santa one year, somebody got him a uh, a demon prince uh, and labeled it as the lion. Uh, we've actually done it twice. Ha! That's long. canon. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Did Eddie, you have, did you have a favorite? You. Obviously, the new Warhammer Forty Thousand is is pretty cool. But did you have like a favorite thing in the other the other previews we had? Um, I was a big fan of the lion. It's pretty cool. It's always cool to see when a primer comes up. But honestly, I'm going to tell you. I'm the, mad that uh, literally all we got to see was the new Termagant box and the Term I new know. Terminators. I want to see that Doom of Malentai, the new Lictor, uh, the new Screamer Killer. Up and, uh, oh, it's one of the give me more Tyranids. I'm going to be sad, though, if the new Carnifex so, is just I'm below the old one out of the water because I like the old Carnifex model. And uh, my Tyranid list is uh, really six Carnifexes right now. Every single game system, basically. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks all. We won't keep you up any longer. You can hear more in the future. Eddie, thanks yep. for having me. No problem. See you guys. All right. So that uh, that was something. That new lion right. was fantastic. Those new seraphon. Um, yeah, so let's take a look here at the uh, all the new reveals. So what did you think of everything, Shade? Um, needed more Tyranids. More Tyranid models. Uh, the addition, new edition looks good. Um, I don't know how um, I feel about the boarding or the combat patrol box uh, game, but you know, well, power levels was also made... power level was also super imbalanced. So, Tyranids back. Who cares? Uh, yeah, Cities of Sigmar, I, whatever about, uh, the line, I'll the line I was super excited for, those new Underworlds models were gorgeous, uh, I'm excited new, for, uh, Beastmen. The new death, the new death models are cool. Yes. Yes. Where's the rest of the, why are they only showing these three? But uh, yeah, the big standout was definitely um, definitely the line. Even though they did reveal tenth edition, yeah, not for me. Not for you, but for I'm me, excited the for that. That was the Doom of Malentai, or whatever that thing is. I'm gonna be more excited for the Doom of Malentai once they show us the Doom of Malentai. It's so obviously the Doom. Though. I'm I mean, so I'm, I'm not. I'm not debating that. I'm just saying, like. I'm about uh, to make my friends very, very scared. I used to take the Doom Mountain in like every game in fiction. They hated him. They celebrated when he left, when she left, and now she's back. Kind of like when you, uh, how you got salty every time I brought my Bane Blade. Yeah, fuck your Bane Blade. <laughs> blade. I hope the like Terminator like. Half Terminator, half Tyranid head is the addition. I'd be cool with that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think that about does it for us tonight. Uh, we've been going for almost two hours. Wait, before we leave, do you even remember that there was a Ter Horus Heresy release in this stream? I mean, you didn't care about it. I didn't care about it. I literally, it was just a book. So. Yeah, I know. That's what I was bringing up. <laughs> yeah, so big loser, Horus Heresy, as usual. Big winners, uh, Tyranids and uh, Dark Angels. Yeah, and Seraphon. And Underworlds. Yeah. Well, Shade, do you have anything to leave us with? Um... 
Um, yeah, Tyranids deserve this. As a Tyranid fan since 5th edition, we needed this. Yeah. So, uh, screw all y'alls, and screw chaos. 